by profession and I am from Ghana. Islam has made it clear that a wife should devotedly obey her husband's commands except the ones that goes contrary to the will of Allah. I want to know if I ask my wife to take care of my mother with things like cooking for her, must she obey my commandment to do it or she can decide not to do it because it's just her mother-in-law. As far as this question is concerned, there was a similar question asked to me during the last question answer session, that is season 8, session 2, but it was from the wife's side. That if my husband tells me something and my mother tells me some, something, who should I obey, who is more important, the husband or the mother, and I gave a detailed answer which I don't intend repeating everything. But I've taken this question because this question is from the other perspective. Now, this is a man who's asking that can he tell his wife to cook food for the mother or do keep her happy and does she have to obey me as he knows very well that she has to obey all the things unless what he says is against the commandment of the Sharia, against the commandment of the Prophet and the Rasul. <clears throat> as far as his, as his understanding of the deen is concerned in this part that the wife should obey the husband as far as he does not tell her to do something which is haram or which is against the sharia that that part of the understanding is correct but you have to have a holistic approach and for this i may have to repeat what i said in my last session or maybe in the last answer that yes respect and taking care of your mother is of utmost importance as the beloved prophet Muhammad said in Sahih bukhari Word number 8, hadith number 5971, that when a man approaches the Prophet and asks him who deserves the maximum companionship in this world, the Prophet said your mother. The man asked who next, the Prophet said your mother. The man asked after that who, the Prophet said your mother. The man asked after that who, and the fourth time the Prophet said your father. That means 75% of the companionship goes to the mother, 25% to the father, the mother gets the gold medal, the silver medal, the bronze medal, the mother, has, the father has to be satisfied with the mere consolation prize. These are the teachings of Islam. So undoubtedly, you have to love your mother. You have to take care of your mother. Allah says in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 23 and 24, that we have ordained for you that you worship none but Allah. And that you be kind to your parents. So after worshipping Allah, Allah says, you have to be kind to your parents. And if one of them or both of them reach old age, don't say off to them. Don't even say a word of contempt. But go to them, your wing of humility, and address them with honor. And pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that bless them as they cherished me in childhood. This is the verse of the Quran. So taking care of your mother is of utmost importance, without doubt. Now coming to your question, that the wife should obey the husband unless he says something which is against the Sharia and you are right. And I quoted the hadith of Musnad Ahmad, volume number two, hadith number 1661 that the Prophet said that a lady who prays five times a day, who fasts in the month of Ramadan, the complete month, guards the chastity and obeys the husband can enter paradise from any of the gates she chooses. The beloved Prophet said in Muslim Ahmad, hadith number 19003, that for a lady, the husband is the paradise or hell. The Prophet said in Ibn Majah, poem number 3, hadith number 1853, that if he would have commanded anyone to bow down after bowing down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if the Prophet would have commanded anyone to bow down, it would be for the woman to bow down to the husband. Because she cannot fulfill the duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until she fulfills the duty to the husband. This is a Sahih Hadith. But what you have to understand, these are Hadith, but there are other Hadiths also. You can't just quote a few Hadith and you can enforce. The Prophet also said, it's mentioned in 
Jamit Urmidi, volume number 6, hadith number 3985, the beloved Prophet said, the best amongst you are those who are best to your wives. That means if you have to be a good Muslim, you have to be good to your wives. You cannot be a good Muslim until you are good to your wife. So it is a two-way traffic. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 187, wa antum libasul lahunna, That you are the garments and they are your garments. That means the role of the husband and wife are like hand and glove. You have to conceal her faults. She has to conceal your faults. You have to beautify her. She has to beautify you. It's the role of a garment. It's the role of hand and glove. So everything has to be taken into context. Now coming to your question. And a similar question was asked to me by a man that, you know, I have a wife. Do I have a right to tell her to cook food? I have a mother and she's elderly. I want to take care. What should do? So after I went through the mahram and found out after inquiring through someone the wife was saying oh my husband he's so rich he has a mercedes car he has a rose roy he can keep five servants why does he want me to cook for the wife i mean for the mother i can cook but if he has, he has got such a, such an expensive car, he spends extravagantly, he has such an expensive watch. If he wants me to cook, I would love to cook. But can't he keep a servant? The other one said, oh, I've got five children. It's so difficult for me to take care. And the person, my husband is not helping. What should I do? So just asking a question is very easy on the WhatsApp or on the Facebook or on the YouTube. What should be done? And nobody has said, no, the wife should obey the husband. Halas, that's not the right thing. You have to know the context. You have to see the situation. So if you are rich and if you can afford a servant, why don't you keep? If I was in your position and if my mother gets elderly, I will tell my wife, okay, teach her good things about the deen. Okay, see to it that if her memory is weak, then see to it that she's offered salah or not. The, the cooking can be done by any servant. So what you have to understand that everything is based on situation. And I know that when I was in Bombay, more than five years back, I used to travel a lot. But whenever I was in Bombay, I made it a point towards the last few years when my parents became elderly. I saw to it that at least every day, one and a half hour I spent with them. I had lunch with them. I went with my wife. We used to stay close by because it's my duty. They didn't require me. They had all the facility. They had all the servants. Then my wife used to cook food. We used to love that time. I was extremely busy. I saw to it that I spent less time in the office. Instead of spending 17 hours, I spent 16 hours. Instead of sleeping three and a half hours, I started sleep, sleeping for half an hour. I adjusted that one and a half hour. I was very happy. It was my duty. They didn't require me. And my brother, Alhamdulillah, may Allah give him jazai khair. He took care of both my parents. My father, before he died, he was excellent. He did the Fardeh Kefaya. He saw to it that he fulfilled all the needs. Because of my brother, when I was in living in India, I could do my dawah freely, I could travel throughout the world. If he would not have done that, it would have been my duty to stay close to my parents because they are elder. And my parents used to love him. My parents used to love me. Whenever we met them, my son, I'm, I'm, uh, my elder brother, mashallah, my elder brother took care. He used to spend few hours every day with them. He saw to it. He fulfilled all the requirements. He being a doctor, my father being a doctor, he saw to it that whatever problem they had. And for this very act, according to me, inshallah, inshallah, Allah will put him in Janit Efredos. Even today, every day, I pray for my brother, Dr. Muhammad Naik, in my tahajjud. That one, he has got many good acts, many good deeds. But that one deed of taking care of the parents, now my father has expired, about five years back, 
and my mother, she's become very old. She is more than 87, 88 years old. Her memory is less. I speak to her on the phone very often. She doesn't remember me because of the age factor, because of the memory. But the way my brother is taking care of my mother during her last days of life, it is phenomenal. Otherwise, I would see to it that I had to look for some alternative, whether I go back to India, I take her, whether I get her out, it's my duty. So he is doing the farad ke fire. Because of that, I am free from my farad. So we have to see to it that how we take care of our parents. Now coming to your question. That can you tell your wife to cook food? I don't know your financial condition. If your financial condition is good, why don't you hire servants? Mashallah, my brother seen to it that though he gives time to them whenever they want is there yet, he has kept two, three servants for them. One to cook separately, one to clean, one twenty hours to take care of her. He's done it wonderfully. If your financial condition is good, you do the same. Give time to your mother, but without giving time, keep and see to it that your wife takes care. But the other things of taking care, speaking to her, loving her, seeing to it that if her age is more and if she forgets to remind her that has she prayed or not. Like my mother, her age is, is, is more than 87, 88 and her memory is very weak. She forgets. She doesn't know who she's speaking to. So my wife, when she, we used to go to meet her, she used to always see to it that has she prayed or not. She used to inquire with the servant. This is more important. Giving quality time and what is the food can be cooked by 100 people. Why are you asking that? If there is a problem, if you are financially not very well secured, surely it is the duty of your wife to cook. If your wife is virtuous and if you don't have the financial position to hire servants, she should do it. You should share. If there are many children, then you see that I will take care of the children or it is a give and take relationship. You both should see to it that you fulfill your duties. Your question that should she take care of my mother because she is her mother-in-law? Question mark. A virtuous wife will consider her mother-in-law to be her own mother. My wife considered my mother to be her own mother. And my mother considered my wife to be her own daughter. So the important thing is having a virtuous family. Never did my mother treat my wife like a daughter-in-law. She always treated like a daughter. And my wife never felt that she was treated like a daughter. No, she always felt that they are the parents. So the right thing is how well, how Islamically educated is the family. And if Islamically educated family is there, then you have a bigger problem. No, I want to do this, I want to do that. So there is a fight between the people that who wants to do the virtuous act. There's a fight between, no, I want to take care today. No, I want to take No, no, I'll, you do tomorrow. I want to take care today. So if in a family, if a virtuous people, there will be an argument that who will be with your mother. There will never be an argument that, oh, there is no one to take care. So the thing is that it is not the number of people that you have in the family. It is if the people are virtuous, if you are virtuous, and if your wife is virtuous, there will never be a question who will cook the food. Who will keep, take care of the mother? If your wife is virtuous, it's a duty. There is no question at all that whether she should obey or not obey. She knows the duty. She has to take care of the husband and the needs of the husband. She has to take care of her children. Everything is a give and take and it's not black and white. She should do, she should not do. She should obey or she should not obey. The earlier question asked by the ladies to me, complaining about their husbands, I don't know how virtuous they are. The lady asking the question or the husband. Same with you. I don't know how virtuous are you or how virtuous is your wife. We cannot give blanket statements. Yes, she has to obey you. And that's true. But are you doing your job? Are you being good to your wife is the question. The prophet said, the best of you are those who are best to the wife. Are you the best to your wife? It's a question. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 19, that 
do not treat your wives it says treat your wives with the footing of equity and kindness even if you dislike her even if you dislike your wife you have to treat her with equity and kindness this is what the quran says so everything is a give and take relationship it is how virtuous you are there should be rather a fight between two virtuous people that who would like to do this work so that they get the jannah there never is a problem that i will not do so the problem that we have in our muslim society is that we have not read the quran we have not understood the quran we have not read the hadith we have not understood the hadith we only pick up hadith and quote it selectively selectively and you try and impose on it islam is you have to read all the quranic verses together in context you can't follow one verse and not the other verse you have to follow the hadith of the prophet not one and neglect the other so if you read the hadith the different hadith you come to know that mashallah though man has been placed as the leader of the family one person has to be the leader the prophet said when two people are traveling one has to be an amir so similarly in the family there has to be one leader so the leader has been appointed by islam as a man but that doesn't mean he can boss over it's a responsibility if you don't do your job properly you will not go to jannah so you have to see to it that you treat your wife with the footing of equity and kindness your jannah is how you treat your wife your the wife jannah is how she behaves with the husband it's a give and take relationship so regarding your question i hope you understood my answer it is not black and white i cannot say yes or no how well you did see to it that you should make the best of it what facility allah has given you it's your duty as a son to take care of your mother in the best ability if allah has given you the financial condition appoint servants 1 2 3 appoint a nurse no problem at the same time you give time to your mother let your wife give time to the mother do things which are more on a higher level than just food if suppose your mother cannot walk to the toilet alone and if you have to support her now allah has given you more strength so when it comes to you carrying the mother or supporting her your strength is more than your wife's strength so it should be you who should see to it that you take your mother to the toilet if if there is a requirement if there is no requirement then no problem so everything is subjective and who is the right person to this do this role is important that way inshallah this life is a test for you allah says in the quran in surah mul chapter number 16 verse number 2 allazi khalaqal mauta wal hayata allah has made life and death as a to test which of you is good in deeds so we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he guide us to follow the correct teachings of quran and the hadith to be on the straight path and see to it that he grants all of us inshallah jannat al firdaus